Welcome to Conscious Revolution podcast. I'm your host Shivani and this is the place where we talk about mindfulness, mindset and manifestation. Each episode here is a deep dive into the stream of consciousness aimed to bring you that what you need in this moment of time and space. Hi beautiful people, welcome to my channel. I'm Shivani and this is Conscious Revolution podcast and I am so happy that you are here listening to me today because I have a very impromptu message uh, uh, to talk about. Family dynamics are coming so big right now uh, with all the clients, with myself and with everyone around me honestly. So I just felt like this is indeed the perfect time to talk about uh, family dynamics, soul contracts, karmic connections, because I feel our relationships uh, are really a place of work, which we honestly never want to put in because we were never told that it is something which needs actually work or which actually needs to put efforts in our relationships have always been thought to be something which is so fluid and we just which just happens like honestly nobody has ever focused about it like people want it but once they get it they just like go on about chasing the next rainbow right so uh and i know how much family dynamics and relationships actually trigger us because there is so much ego that is stripped off when we are in connections and when we are in relationships and again not just talking about a romantic relationship talking about all relationships because our relationship with our parents with our kids with our uh extended family with our neighbors with our colleagues with our friends whatever they all are a sort of a spiritual assignment they are soul contracts no one meets to you with you no one no one meets you without a spiritual assignment due for both of you no meeting is ever a coincidence there is an alchemical process which kicks off no matter how insignificant even that meeting may seem like to you but on some level you have an exchange when you are in contact with another person the exchange of energy uh so a lot of times you might feel like um i was not so when i talk about romantic relationships you might feel like i was never in a rom- i was never in a relationship but you know spiritually it doesn't really matter because the energy exchange happen so labels are honestly just for humans uh they don't really actually satisfy our inner quest of love um because it's it's just something beyond the labels right so talking about family dynamics i just feel that um uh, if somebody really wants to start on to healing if somebody really wants to dive deep into um into really a uh, where do i begin my healing journey begin with yourself and then what comes after your immediate self is your immediate family your parents and of course then it goes on to your extended family and then goes on to all of those places from where though these patterns which you're carrying are coming from right your dna does carry the fragments of every generation that has come through and so your parents do play a very important role in how you have become what you are today not just because of what kind of parenting you received not because the kind of thoughts uh or uh manners honestly that's how we judge parenting on a surface level uh it's it's so much deeper and beyond than that because a lot of times parents might be like we never said anything to you we never did anything to you 
but the subconscious energy is so powerful and so much of it is transferred in our DNAs that uh, we really cannot uh, pinpoint or say what is it that they said or did which kind of like made us into who we are today. Again, understanding family dynamics. Why am I talking about this? The soul contracts, this family dynamics. Because so many of us, when we understand that, okay, um, I am who I am today because of the parenting I received. So we start blaming our parents. And this is something which is just so toxic, to be honest, because you chose, your soul chose to take birth in this setup in a family where they had all these traumas, where they had all this healing work to be done, where they had all of this, um, uh, these DNA encodings, where they had these patterns. And your soul, especially at this time, honestly, and if you're listening to this, definitely, your soul chose to incarnate into this setup You said, yes, I volunteer. I want to go into a family dynamics which has a history of trauma or uh, slavery or uh, poverty or whatever. Uh, I want to go. I want to embody all of those things so that I can break the pattern and I can create something new and I can uh, heal all the seven generations before me because that's what happens. When you heal yourself, you heal the generations before you, you heal the generations coming after you. So if you're honestly healing yourself right now, if you're on this journey, I want to tell you, you're not just doing it for yourself. You're not just doing it for your future kids, but in some way you will deeply impact your parents and your grandparents and some way your extended family as well. Why do they trigger us? But right. Uh, uh, let go of even the need about blaming but if i talk about they really trigger us because they are our karmics karmics are people with whom we have karma to be balanced and we chose them uh, because of course we had some karma and we decided to break some certain patterns with them and so of course they play their role when they push the buttons like i remember how i used to be like oh my god my mom knows what where it hurts the most it's not consciously, it's just what her spiritual assignment is and what it is for every one of us out there. This is why our parents seem to be like, oh my God, they're getting on our nerves. Oh my God, they're really testing me. We all have been there. Like, I don't want any shame to be associated in accepting that. I know there's so much of taboo around it and we all want to show this happy perfect picture of a happy family and of course I am very happy with my parents but I won't deny that there has been a lot of energetic work that I have been putting into it as well Uh, and I still get triggered I still get super triggered they're definitely my perfect karmics uh, because they really do get me into this place where I get so triggered that I have no other thing to do but to actually take responsibility for my own self for my own healing and to actually look at the places that I have been really denying to look at yeah Uh, in that sense honestly of course with karmics the thing is that it's a cycle yes so uh, a lot of people kind of like move out after a certain age or after a certain time or Uh, Because probably their soul contract was up until that time and they have they have a contract to learn these lessons from someone else For me, I think I have learned uh, My biggest karmics have been my parents. I have learned the most deepest lessons from my parents from my relationship with them I uh, I really feel like it's been a long a very very long-term soul contract for that matter Uh, I did not sign it up to do it with anybody else. For a lot of people, I feel they get these uh, lessons from karmic partners, that is the people they date or they get married to. Uh, That wasn't for me, I believe. Uh, For me, the, yeah, my parents have definitely been my biggest karmic partners. (laughs) 
karmic uh, yeah whatever you want to call it uh, but whatever label we use at the end of the day when someone really is triggering you uh, we need to understand that first of all you cannot change them and that's uh, so much of it comes in my healing practices in my healing work where people want to of course it's not like they want to it's just so natural because i remember when i got aware about all the places that i've been carrying my inner child hurts i had this reaction to be super angry and to really blame them on some level only to realize after a while uh, that they just didn't know any better that's all they didn't know any better and their probably their soul lesson was actually about providing a physical space for me and for me it is about harnessing that spiritual and mental and emotional well-being for all of us have different roles to play right once we understand this we can just see the situation from so uh from such a spiritual perspective from such a non attached perspective where we do not have this resentment against them because we see them for we, we we get them off the pedestal one of the reasons why we get really disappointed with uh people most likely now that we're talking about parents uh is because we are uh, we just keep them on a pedestal and uh, and when and we forget that they're human beings and when we get older and we see things for as they have been uh, we get really angry uh, because we've keep them on a pedestal and when we recognize they were not perfect as we thought they were uh we see them for their their humanness we get really 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 frustrated uh because it's like our our the heart, it's it's the heartbreak of your inner child which happens which feels so devastating like how could my parents do that to me or to the older version of me or to 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 uh the younger version of me it's because your parents were also learning it's because your parents were also most likely first time parents as mine were and so it's so important to kind of like recognize that it's not out of spite that they did or said or reacted anyway if they had all that education if they had all that awareness you wouldn't be here right now listening to me i wouldn't be here right now doing this work as i said we all have different roles and different lessons to conquer and to play uh most likely if you're somewhere in your 20s and your 30s uh your parents role was to give you a very strong physical foundation for most of us uh for uh, and uh, that's why i see so many people in the 20s really uh being um really looking forward to something more than just a job and a house and yeah we we are literally the generation which we, we just want something more and we feel that there's something wrong with it there's nothing wrong with it it's just that our assignments for that matter has been to look for emotional mental and most importantly spiritual oneness and well-being which was totally totally ignored by our previous generation right so um yeah uh again what can you do you can take responsibility for yourself so first of all take them off the pedestal second of all forgive them there has to be a very deep forgiveness because right now you might like be like oh but i'm chill with my parents uh if you've not done the work you got to do the work at some point if you're not going to do today you will do tomorrow i can guarantee that because you want it or not you understand it or not you do have somewhere these resentments which kind of like flare up and of course you would be in total denial if you are someone who hasn't really spent a lot of time with your parents i have spent a lot of time with my parents right uh, so, so all of that stuff is like very evident in my physical life uh, for if you haven't spent a lot of physical time with you with your parents your first reaction might be like oh everything is chill uh, but it's the same uh, if you really want to see how awakened you are go spend a week with your family <laughs> 
and I can watch for that. It's really easy to 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 go out there, be in isolation, and uh, feel like I have awakened and I'm conscious. Our true tests begin when we start incorporating those lessons we have harnessed in our isolation with the people, the community, and especially our family, as I said, because they are your karmics. They know exactly, of course, not consciously, but the souls know what are the buttons which need to be pushed for you to kind of like uh, react, get triggered. Uh, and so I just want to like, the point of making this podcast is actually to make you realize it is possible for you to live a harmonious relationship. It is possible for you to heal those areas because a lot of times I feel like people feel that if you have moved out or if you have, um, if, if just, just, just separating with your parents or separating with any, any, any person for that matter who triggers you, it's not the solution because guess what? The problem is not in the connection. So many times we feel, we, we tend to say, oh my God, the connection was toxic. The connection was toxic. And I just want to say, the connection is not toxic. The people involved in the connection are toxic. And you too are, you too have played your role in that toxicity. So take responsibility for that and make changes that you need to make. Heal those places. So for example, uh, for people who've not had a very good relationship with their mothers or sometimes, as I'm saying, for me, honestly, nothing super dramatic has ever happened between me and my parents. Uh, but there have been still just so many things which have come up in my healing, uh, which is because these are so, it's so organized it's such a part of our culture it's such a part of our upbringing that we don't even realize sometimes that it's wrong right it's, it's we, we have normalized a lot of those things so when you start actually healing when you start actually feeling those places for example if you have a fear of abandonment that is you're always you're not able to trust uh, people around you, you're not able to really have intimate relationships, you're really scared to open up emotionally, most likely uh, you do have a mother or a father wound, which means that you did not get enough attention from your father, you were afraid, your mother did not love you the way you wanted to be loved, uh, you felt ignored, you felt hurt, and could be really hurt by something very naive because the thing is, our, our, our minds are so fragile when we are kids. We just are like, we, we absorb things. We don't really decipher and we don't really make sense. Oh, uh, if they have said this, then this means this. No, we don't do that. We like, we just pick it up. We just feel the energy and we, and we just, and we just live with it. So if, if your parents uh, would have been like, if they would have lashed out at you or they have been frustrated at work and unknowingly they have kind of like passed it on to you because that's what I think been so normal, you as, as a kid, you would have picked on to it. You would have picked on to the stress, that energy of stress, that energy of frustration, that energy of anger. And as a, as a child, you might have felt that this is for me, even though it was not for you, but you might have. And it's still there. So forgiveness does play a very, very important role once you recognize and see all these places. Uh, one of the reasons why most of our adult relationships are not really amazing and beautiful is because we've not really addressed our connections with our parents. And uh, our parents, again, whomever you have spent a lot of time growing up, um, and uh, yeah, forgiveness comes from understanding that the other person is a mirror and they're reflecting something in you. So if you feel that in a fight, if someone calls you, if you're really triggered by they are such a cleanliness freak or I mean, I'm sorry, that's been my story. <laughs> or for you it's been a story something like um, say for example they expect too much from me or they never understand me or they don't accept me they don't love me they don't uh, get me 
then somewhere it's a great opportunity for you to actually not get triggered and actually hold yourself accountable. This is actually a task I gave to one of my clients this last week. Uh, that next time whenever you're triggered, <laughs> instead of reacting in that moment, hold on, take a deep breath and just say like, where am I not accepting myself? Where am I not... Um, where am I not really accepting myself? Where, am, where have I hurt myself? Where I am not loving myself? Because at the end of the day, we all are mirrors to each other. And I can vouch for, the, for it. When you actually start forgiving your parents, when you actually start releasing those resentments, when you actually start accepting your situation for what it is, when you actually start um, seeing it from a very soul perspective, so many things will be released so many things will be released you will actually see a shift in your connection with your family you'll actually see a shift in them in how they live their life and you will actually start seeing a uh, seeing a shift in how you you start interacting with other people how your relationship with other people start flourishing because you have healed that inner child in you so when people ask me, where do I begin my healing? You begin your healing with yourself. You're healing your inner child. The child has, is not like just because you're grown up. It's not like dead. It's living within you. So start being friends with your inner child. Start understanding where was it that she or he was hurt. Where did or she or she felt abandoned or rejected or hurt. So for example, if uh, your pattern in your adult relationship is, I'm always rejected or I'm afraid someone will leave me. Those two are one of the most common. So there are of course so many others, but I'm just, or maybe you're trying to please someone or you're really trying to prove all the time. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm enough. Uh, I really love you or something like uh, I, I, I really um, uh, need to work a lot. Like I'm not enough feeling. Then that's also somewhere coming from your childhood. So, and your childhood, of course, is related to your parents because that's where you've spent your time with. So it's all super, super, super interconnected, but it's all about taking responsibility and looking at that inner child within and addressing her issues, addressing her, um, her pain. Honestly, all that pain really wants is to be acknowledged. It doesn't even want to be fixed you don't have to fix your inner child's heart. You just have to look at it, acknowledge it. I know you were pain. I know you felt hurt. And I'm sorry I couldn't protect you at that time. But now I'm here and I love you and I accept you and you're loved. And I love you and your parents also love you. As an adult, you can understand the things which you probably did not, right? As a child, what I said, if uh, a parent was really being frustrated on something else, and they were projecting onto you. Of course, you did not have the brain to do to, to say, okay, they are projecting onto me. No, you did not have it. You just felt like it was you. But as adults, you can take this responsibility of reparenting yourself and actually giving yourself the love that you were always worthy of, giving yourself the attention that you always wanted. Uh, so yeah, I would really want you to kind of like look at the patterns which you see in your connections, in your adult relationships. Uh, again, relationships, not a label, but an, uh, but uh, all the connections that you share around with you. Uh, what are the places which really capture these essence? Uh, and then see where are you all, where are you getting it from your parents? So sometimes they said also it's the it, it's kind of like your duty, your your mission on this planet to break those patterns. Do not continue with the same patterns, right? Uh, because uh, you, you get it from your extended family as well, because of course you share the same lineage, you share the same DNA, right? Uh, so a lot of times some things might annoy you in them, so again, a great mirror, like I also have in a sense of this behavior and this pattern, and if it is really annoying me in them, it means that it, it annoys me that it's inside of me as well, because for me, this was something so big which was revealed to me, and... Uh, so for, 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 for a while I have been like, why am I thinking about this so much? Why am I thinking about my extended family so much? And I used to get dreams of them. And I couldn't really place. And I used to get feel really triggered and about some of the behaviors. 
and then I really like addressed and asked myself and I realized okay well it's not them I also have these traits and these are the traits I'm not really proud of I don't want to continue they don't serve me and so I let them go and once I let them go I actually felt a shift uh, I actually felt uh, I stopped getting those dreams so you know whenever the universe is really trying to get your attention towards something you you think about some people you get those dreams and stuff the universe is just trying to get your attention to it and once you address it it's like chill move on right so i hope this podcast really helps you this podcast gives you a new perspective and if it does please let me know um take care have a beautiful week ahead if you have any questions you can always dm me at dream life lounge and uh, i have my website going up again it was offline for a moment but it'll be up again and i have a lot of exciting stuff coming up so which is i think i'll probably talk about in the next podcast so yeah uh, this is a great time to actually heal this is a great time to actually look at those places and pour some love there right i love you guys so much have a beautiful week ahead and uh, happy healing it doesn't have to be suffering it doesn't have to be a struggle you can reach out you can reach out for the resources and it can be actually easy it can be actually soothing because once you do it you realize it's so relieving you've been living with it it's like you're living with uh trapped and you didn't even know you were trapped it's like you're living with a stone on your heart and you didn't even know that you were living with one that's what happens when you heal th- these places and definitely inner child and parenting healing is such a game changer <laughs> in terms of your abundance in terms of your love in terms of your career in terms of every single thing honestly so yeah i hope this supports you and i'll uh get back to you very soon have a beautiful week ahead loves